This is Conference USA Basketball on ESPN Plus. Tonight from Miami, the thundering herd from Marshall are in town looking to get back in the win column. They match up against the FIU Panthers where life is good at home. FIU unbeaten in this building this season. Well, good evening, everyone. Glad to have you alongside us. I'm AJ Rickett, and that's Danny Torres. Of course, we're only days removed from the events of Sunday morning out in California. Of course, the tragic helicopter crash that claimed the lives of nine victims, including, of course, Kobe and Gigi Bryant, that, of course, casting a shadow over not just basketball, but the entire sporting world. Those ties come here to this building today. Of course, Dan D'Antoni, the Marshall head coach, spent a number of seasons as an assistant on the Lakers staff where he knew Kobe Bryant very well. And all of us here, we certainly send our thoughts and prayers to those affected by this tragedy, all nine of those victims and their families. A lot of the players, coaches, folks around the sport of basketball coping with this, trying to move forward by going out and playing some basketball. And tonight's uh, an entertaining matchup, I'm sure. You got Marshall and FIU, two teams that like to get up and down the court. Should be a good deal of fun tonight. Certainly, AJ, and let's keep those affected in this tragedy in, in our thoughts yeah. and prayers. And Heading into tonight's matchup, Marshall and FIU both coming off of losses to Western Kentucky and Charlotte. Uh, they come into a building where FIU has not lost all year, and it's going to be a great uh, contest to see what happens here tonight. All right, it's been nearly a full calendar year since the Panthers have lost in this building. Life is tough on the road, even with Per Diem, but the Panthers were able to split a pair last week. One at Old Dominion, lost against Charlotte. Panthers shot poorly from beyond the arc in that loss, 15%. And at 32% from the field, 15 from beyond the arc. Charlotte picked up a home win where they're playing well. But before that, had a nice win at Old Dominion where they had never won before. He's been a great factor, uh, Eric Lovett, coming into this ball game. Uh, he's been a great factor to the team, but he's going to need help from his supporting cast. You know, in that second half loss to Charlotte, they were shooting 24% and 16% from the three-point line, and that's just not going to cut it to win these ball games. Eric Lovett's been great coming off the bench for FIU. Meanwhile, the herd, boy, tough back-to-back -back losses against Western Kentucky this past week. Their rivals, uh, Camp Henderson Center, they were up by 19 points in the second half, only scored two over the course of the final eight and a half minutes. But they've seen some good things from Tavion Kinsey, and a lot of these losses, Danny and Conference play, they've been really close losses. Certainly, AJ, and you mentioned Tavion Kinsey. He's got four double-doubles so far this season, and I think it's the testament uh, to this conference where we've seen the, the record doesn't really matter. Any game in any given moment is a tough matchup. Dan D'Antoni in his sixth season guiding the herd, of course, took them to the 2018 NCAA tournament. How much fun was that? They knocked off Wichita State, ended up playing West Virginia in the second round. Weren't able to get another upset, but certainly very proud of their team up in Huntington. That was the first tournament for Marshall and more in three decades. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, it's been since 1995 since FIU reached their one and only NCAA tournament, but certainly aspirations of that year this season where they've had a great home record, 14-7 and seven overall. Jeremy Ballard has re-energized this program in his year and a half here at FIU, coming from a Shaka Smart coaching tree. Jeremy Ballard doing great things here in Miami. Let's take a look at the starting lineups this evening from the Ocean Bank Convocation Center where the Panthers are 9-0. Osasu Osagai underneath leads the country in blocks, his second in blocks per game. He an anchors the Panthers lineup underneath Devon Andrews as well, averaging nearly 17 points per game. For the Hurs, starting five, you've got Taylor, Kinsey, Bennett, Jared West, and Marco Sharonix, the Serbian freshman as well. Tavion Kinsey, the USA All-Freshman team last season, he's averaging 15 and a half in his sophomore campaign. Here's Antonio Day, leads the conference in assist. Heard will have to keep an eye on his ability to distribute the basketball. Should be an entertaining ball game this evening. Thank you for joining us on ESPN Plus. Thursday, Saturday, conference slates. Another week as we approach the conclusion of January. Yep, we got an early one on Saturday against Western Kentucky. I think a noon tip. Yeah. 2 p.m., got to check the schedule. Of course, uh, some appetizers, maybe, if you will, for uh, the main events on Sunday, a certain football game taking place up the turnpike in Miami Gardens. This should be a fun Super Bowl. Kansas City and San Francisco underway here. Marshall controlling the tip. We got to talk to the Marshall SID before uh, tonight's matchup, talking about how Marshall they went to go check out some of those South Beach Super Bowl festivities. Oh yeah, got to take night. advantage of it in the weather and the, the events down here as Bennett starts off the scoring for Marshall. The 
Redshirt sophomore, hair under 10 points per game, making an effort to get down low. Here's Day. I think he wanted to lob it initially. And then maybe was going for uh, the floater. Nobody got back underneath, and it's a 4 0 lead for Marshall quickly. Charnitz was unmarked. Andrews follows his own miss. And that's Blotz. Bennett's a brick wall in the paints. Marshall's got some big boys. Taylor will fire. Skips off the rim, but that's what Dan D'Antoni wants to see. I was talking to him pregame. He said, Andy, sometime as Day gets to the line, Andy's trying to become more of a distributor than I would like at this point in time. Taylor's eligible now, a transfer from Furman. He wants him to shoot the basketball. Showed uh, no hesitance there as Day gets to the free throw line, drawing a foul on Bennett. Quick start here for the herd. We're seeing early on Day Jr. trying to get to the basket. It's obvious just got himself to the foul line and that uh, reference of him leading the conference in assists. He had that wide open look over to Devin Andrews and that's what Coach Ballard likes to see from Day Jr. just trying to strip the basketball and help his teammates out. Really taking a step forward in that department. This season, of course, not easy to replace an all-conference guard like Brian Beard. Day doing an admirable job. And at 10 points per game this season as well. 4-2 lead here for the herd in the early going. And that was partially deflected by Andrews. Usually it's Osagai perhaps getting a piece of the basketball in those perimeter shots. FIU switches one through five. Something the Marshall players earlier this week, they, uh, we, we've, they said, we've seen teams now switch one through four, but rarely will another team put their, their big, their five, on our point guard. And Jeremy Ballard and his coaching staff has no hesitation about switching Osasu or Sagai or Damon Kerrigan when he comes off the bench. That just shows the kind of confidence Ballard has in his big, that he's confident that Osagai can just play in any part of the floor and defend in any part of the floor. Bennett was trying to post up underneath. Kinsey will fire away. Not a bad shot, but rims out. Here comes FIU. 14 and seven overall, five and three in conference play, currently sitting fifth in the standings. Bennett ripped it away from Osagai. In the open floor, Sjernich, the finish. The first fast start to the thundering herd. But that last possession was just turnover by FIU. Banks has more of a license to shoot from the outside this season. It's cooled off the last five or six games, though, from beyond the arc. West rise and fire off targets. As we were speaking before the ball game, Day Jr., yes, he's leading the conference in assists, but he's had some trouble of taking care of the basketball. Jacob, short arms, this one. Yeah, you look at the stat line for Day, 110 assists, 86 turnovers entering tonight. Bennett keeps it alive, gets it right back. Bennett's to the line as Jacob committed the foul. I think Bennett can be a big issue for FIU tonight down low. The Panthers' losses this season, there's typically been a pretty solid interior presence on the opposing side. Of course, in non-conference play, they saw that against Mississippi State and North Carolina State. And then up at Minnesota, Daniel Oturu, who's one of the best bigs in the Big Ten, he put up 21 and 20 on the Panthers. Then it's 6'9", 299. It's a big body for Osaga to deal with underneath. There's not a lot of front court depth for, for FIU. Kerrigan comes off the bench and does an admirable job, but they're still waiting for CDK to, to potentially get a waiver. They only have two true bigs on this roster. And you can see that size from Bennett, AJ, and definitely he's going to use that to wear you down throughout the night. Big fella can't hit the second free throw. Nine point advantage. For the herd in the early going. And their offense that leads the conference in points per game, just under 80. Here's Andrews looking for a screen. James Amatepe has checked in the ball game as well as Andrews 
Hits a floater from the elbow. Cam Corcoran and James Amatepe check again. This is part of Jeremy Ballard's strategy tonight. Guys are going to play. He's going to rotate guys more often than he typically does. He wants to wear Marshall out and wants his defense providing pressure at a high level as Corcoran picks up the steal here. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Andrews hit that shot in the last possession. And he's averaging 16 points per game, so it'd be nice to get him going. It's going to be an intentional foul on Antonio Day. Wrapping up Kinsey before he could launch. A one whistle, one referee had a, an intentional, the other a common. We'll take a look. 7-4 Marshall as we had to break in Miami. founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights, it's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We're committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. We welcome you back to the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. 7-4 Marshall ahead early. And on the road where they are 2-6 this season. FIU off to a cold shooting start. 1-7 for seven from the field. This guy right here, a lot really excited to watch him play. Tavion Kinsey. 6'5", 185, sophomore guard. Coming off a 16-point game on 6-14 of 14 shooting, shooting. And he'll have a pair of free throws by himself after the intentional foul. They didn't necessarily need to wrap him up. They wanted to be sure as <laughs> Kinsey high fives his teammates. He's got a career high 14 assists this season on November 21st against Howard. He's really got uh, that wow factor. As Dan D'Antoni told us, three gaming gets the crowd on their feet. Makes terrific plays. He loves his defensive effort. And his scoring has certainly taken a step up. It has to without the presence of guys like John Elmore, C.J. Burks. Nice turnaround. Quick shot there from Bennett with the left hand. Forget about Watson as well. He had seven points per game. They lost more than half their scoring from last year. Marshall still hanging in there. There's Blake Furcron in and out. The home iron unkind. Great vision by Day Jr. to shoot that over to the corner. Lecron hasn't seen too many minutes recently. He's been battling a shoulder issue as well. But the guys are going to play tonight for FIU. Day got past the first defender, but only because of the illegal screen as Amatepe is whistled. This is not a lineup this team has seen that often this season. Amatepe, Corcoran, Furcron on the court. Amatepe will head to the bench. are going to get burned. Jojo Nunez will get some time as well for the Panthers. And the other reserves for FIU. No guy back in though. It's been quiet thus far. First five minutes. Already six points off of turnovers Eric, for Marshall. Eric Lovett going one on three and West deflected it. Lovett got it back and rattled it home. And determined Eric Lovett there. Driving into traffic, able to get the buckets, and it's 11-6. 
Pick and roll, they go to Bennett. A little bit too much. Here's the follow over Osaga. Marshall's not, they're not showing any fear of Osaga. They're going attacking straight to the paint. Sharenich is getting involved and they're really going as well. 13-6, Corcoran fires, too strong. Bennett muscling it away, Osaga able to take it away initially, diving for the loose ball. Look at that hustle from the big fella. Day the floater, it falls. That'll generate some excitement among the crowd. Nice hustle sequence there for the Panthers and the Baby Blues tonight. Day hounding West down the ensuing possession. West going all the way. Look at that drive. Jared West, the junior, going 90 feet, hounded by Day. And it's 15 to eight. And he just worked his way slowly all the way to the basket. He didn't get a lot of help there. He just bullied his way to the paint. Corcoran wants a high ball screen from Osaga. And he's fine to love it. That's a good shot for him. Off the mark. Love it coming off some strong performances in the last few games. 23 against UAB. West found some space. Bennett's put back no good. Another chance, and he'll go to the line for two. Pennant already showing his dominant size and force down low. He has been a problem here in the early going. Five points, four rebounds. He's halfway. Nearly halfway to a double-double through six and a half minutes or so. Myron Bennett, originally from the Triangle, North Carolina, Durham. Went to Hargrave Military Academy. We take another look at that hustle sequence that Day was able to finish with a floater over Bennett. Darius George is entered for Marshall. Minutes have gone down in the last month or so, still averaging six points per game. Been good on the free throws. As Milodevic will enter for Ben and give him a break. Well deserved break. That big's been working hard yeah. down low early on. And a seven footer on the 6'9 uh, Osaga, 6'10, I should say. Go with Lovett and Andrews. It's a great job by Andrews to recognize Osaga underneath and trying to finish. Two shots upcoming here for Osaga. I was actually a pretty good free throw shooter, one of the better guys off the line on this team for FIU. Osaga, 74% strike. Andrews was able to draw in the defenders to leave Osaga right there before he was fouled. FIU, three for 13 now from the field. Marshall six for 16 as Osaga off on the second. And nobody back once more, an easy reverse layup underneath for Darius George who just checked in. Transition defense off a of free throw costing the Panthers here. And that's a de defensive mislapse, AJ, because we legit just saw him run unguarded, unmarked across the scorer's table. Jacob's been quiet. Connects his first triple of the evening. He's been a marksman this year, about 40% from beyond the arc. Playing well in his final season at FIU. Another turnover here. Andrews. Nice read and fake. Off to Lovett, gets another bucket from about one foot out. A 5-0 spurt for the Panthers, brings them within five then. 19-14. Panthers trying to apply that pressure early on. That's, that's another turnover. Well, both three left to go in the first half. Sixth turnover for the herd, including back-to-back -back possessions. You know, at Charlotte, Jacob only had two points. And he did not connect from beyond the arc. That was the first game since November 22nd against Eastern Kentucky in which Jacob did not hit a three. Well, able to get back on track. 
puck it from beyond the arc from the early going here. Andrews, step back jumper from the wing. 8-0 spurt for FIU, and it's back to a one possession game. Talking about Jacob, that must be something he's worked incredibly hard for in this offseason, shooting from beyond the arc, and he's been pretty decent you know, throughout the course of the season, shooting beyond the arc. Throughout the course of his career, Jacob, 39% this season, FIU an 8-0 run. Jacob and Andrews with a step back, and we've got a ball game in Miami. For 25 years, Conference USA student athletes have done things the only way that we know how, the CUSA way. In that quarter of a century, we've learned a thing or two about winning, both on and off the field. Our student athletes are more than just great athletes. They're fantastic students and they're outstanding citizens who give back to their communities. We are committed to excellence. We are stronger together. That's the CUSA way. It's been quite a while since FIU's last home loss, nearly a full calendar year ago, Southern Miss. That was 14 games since the Panthers fell the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. Leonard Harper Baker and the Golden Eagles. Harper Baker at 21, Cortez Edwards and Tyree Griffin both with 18. In front of a sparse crowd. Southern Miss able to walk out of here with a victory. FIU since then, unblemished at home. Moving this season where they're 9-0. Tough matchup tonight to continue that streak. I mean, this is a daunting next three games for FIU in this building as Marshall gives it away again. Between the Herd, Western Kentucky, and the rivalry, and then FAU next week. I mean, the odds uh, might be against FIU and coming out of all three of those unscathed. As Panthers got two more points off transition. Ooh, going up high nearly for the bucket. Osama gets the board, influencing the shot of Miladinovic. We're tied at 19. It's a 10-0 run for FIU. Corcoran for three. Jacob was trying to go over the back of West, but nearly taken it away from Jacob on the previous possession. There's a nice bucket. Darius George has a pair of field goals. Marshall retakes the lead. George, a junior forward from Virginia, coming off an eight-point game at Western Kentucky, Osangai cleans things up underneath. Danny, uh, expected maybe a track meet here today. It's living up to it so far. Maybe not a model of defense through 10 minutes. But, I mean, you look at the match of last year, <laughs> the kind of games they had in West Virginia, there's Osangai. Leads the country in that category. There's his first of the evening. And that's what's filled the seats this season, seeing Osangai coming into the lane and swatting those shots away. Influenced West's corner three, and out of bounds, and a shot clock violation, one or the other. Marshall out of sorts on the offensive end. Even on that run to start this game. FIU has made some adjustments here as you take a look at Osagai on the help. And he is such a fun player to watch, of course. His story has been well chronicled to walk on here from Miami to this program. Went to Robert Morgan High School, only had one block in his freshman campaign where he played 12 minutes. Now he's swinging the ball around. Jacob, the finger roll and the finish. I thought he was going to go with the poster right there. 
had to adjust. That's a nice play from Trey John Jacob. And FIU has the lead for, I believe, what is the first time tonight. West can't respond. Here come the Panthers, always looking to run. What a pass. Andrews, a tattoo strong. Jay was trying to draw contacts. He would have nailed that three-pointer after that pass. That would have been extremely beautiful and would be on top plays. From an FIU perspective, up two, and that now back to a tie game. Darius George, good minutes here. Be saying, well, what about the push off on Andrews? But that coming after the whistle would appear. 23 all. Both teams nine for 23 from the field, and Marshall, whew, 0 for 9 from beyond the arc. Ice cold from distance. AJ, I see a couple guys breathing hard already. This is going to be a game of who's got better conditioning. That's part of FIU's strategy tonight. They're going to go deeper into their bench than they typically do. Hoping to wear out the depth of Marshall. Day, another floater that time. Amatepe can't bring it in. Again, this is not a lineup the Panthers use often between Amatepe and Furtkron being on the courts. Dylan to West. The ball fake. Stripped out of bounds. It'll stay with the hurt with 8.24 to go in the first half. Marshall coming off a 23-14 and 14 campaign. Finished sixth in the Conference USA standings. A lot of youth on this team, and D'Antoni certainly can't wait another year or two down the road, but doing a good job with the squad he has now. Banks is wide open in the corner, buries it. Great take. Isaiah Banks, despite his struggles from three, this team trusts him with that shot. He started the year 50% through the non-conference portion of the schedule. And another giveaway for the herd. Jacob taking on West, and he connects off the glass. Trey John Jacob as we head to the under eights. Going right at Jared West. Leads the team in steals. The bucket and the foul, and a five point lead for FIU. Well, it's too bad these guys don't have any more eligibility. These were two of the funnest players to watch in Conference USA the last couple of seasons. Boy, John Elmore, one of the best players in the history of Marshall basketball, of course, set scoring records up in Huntington, led them to the CIT Championship last year. Brian Beer only spent two seasons at FIU after coming over from JUCO in California, but he made his legacy felt, led the team in steals. Both years, and the game winner against La Tech. 
lot of fun to watch both those guys play the last couple seasons. John Elmore, of course, leading the herd to their first NCAA tournaments in 31 years. Talk about leaving a legacy, Elmore certainly did that. Ryan Beard Jr. brought that sort of California swag over to FIU. <laughs> a good way to describe it. Boy, if he had been here four years, he'd have really broken a number of records. That might be on Banks trying to swat the basketball back out to Jacob. No more average 20 points per game last season. What was the veteran presence? And the leadership he provided. I mean, him, Burks, Watson. You look at the, the roster right now for Marshall. A lot of youth. Sharonich, freshman. Dylan, a redshirt freshman. Bennett, a redshirt sophomore. Kinsey, a true sophomore. Andy Taylor, a redshirt freshman. Mila Dinovich, a freshman. I mean, all across the board, it's youth. Here, here's Banks in the open court. Oh, blocked from behind, but a foul. Number one, get some space. Fans here get ready to get on their feet. And back off of what you were saying, AJ, so much youth in this Marshall team, but when you got a coaching experience like D'Antoni has, I think this team has a bright future ahead of them. And D'Antoni always so fun to talk to. Former assistant. With the, uh, with the Lakers, of course, with his brother, Mike. Went to Marshall. Graduated in 1970, former point guard. Spent uh, 30 years, head coach at Sockesty High School, and then went up to the NBA ranks with the Phoenix Suns, Knicks, and Lakers. And good to have him back home in West Virginia. Here's West. This fires. Nice board by Jacob, who's always a willing rebounder. Oh, that, that was a pass for Osaga. It, it nearly found its way to the hoop. That would have been something else. Here's Bennett back in the game. Cradling. Look, look, look at him palm the ball all the way to the rim, getting past Osaga. That's just disrespectful. <laughs> the big fella. With some handle. Byron Bennett. I want to see him run the point, Danny. See what he can do. Jacob from the corner. And that hits the top of the backboard. That'd be one Number big point guard. Yeah, I mean, look at that move. I don't know if we'll get another look at it, maybe in a couple minutes. But yeah, getting right by Osagai, blowing by him. Free throw line, Kinsey back in. 6-11 to go in the first half. Not every day you got your big out there handling the basketball that way. Look, and, and, and you know the, th the theme we've talked about throughout tonight this far, Dan D'Antoni wanting his guys, his playmakers to be more aggressive. Uh, you know, Bennett's certainly one of those guys that was only shot twice at Western Kentucky. He didn't have you know, two points. And two shots and 0 of 2 from the field at, at Western Kentucky. Lovett's open. The putback, no good. Another opportunity for FIU. Day up top. Osaga got it that time. Oh, what a lob and a finish. Day to Osaga has been the connection this season for FIU. Kinsey looking to respond. He short arms it. And FIU looking to run once more. Here's Day. In his back, some nifty dribbling. Osagai's made three from the top of the key. And he fires a fastball into the arms of Andy Taylor. Taylor a pull up. Yes. That's a big shot right there. Really fell. And FIU is starting to pull away a little bit. Had their largest lead of the game. A foul. And two free throws upcoming for Andrew. And the pace of this ball game is just insane. I think we just saw like six possessions in the span of two minutes. <laughs> a beautiful style of play, or somewhat concerning depending on your perspective. Is look at that from Osaka. That's a top ten nominee, no doubt. Andrews has struggled from the line this season. Good looking free throw there. 
Sagai will get a breather. We haven't seen Damon Kerrigan tonight. That certainly explains some of the minutes from James Amatepe. He's typically the last big to go in the rotation for FIU, though Amatepe standing at 6-5. Kerrigan does have that left knee heavily taped. Jojo Nunez is entered for the first time. Taylor Blue right by him. Fight for the rebound and a jump ball. Bennett and Andrews fighting for and the arrow goes to FIU. And you've got to think, AJ, just with having the D'Antoni name in this program, that Marshall's got some pretty good connections into, into the NBA with uh, his younger brother being the head coach of the Houston Rockets. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mike uh, coached some of the best around the league. One of his stops. Phoenix, LA, of course, Houston. Rockets always fun to watch as well. Andrews trying to hang in midair. He's bumped out of bounds. It'll go over to Marshall. Of course, a couple of years ago, uh, he was down here in Miami. Marshall, Hassan Whiteside, only played a year, but he broke some records over in Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah, well, we got some uh, pictures of Whiteside from his Marshall days. We'll play that uh, in a little bit. But he certainly made an impact in his one year in West Virginia. I think a lot of folks forget he played that one year for the Herd. Certainly refreshed my memory going over the history of Marshall, players they've sent to the pros. Kinsey. It connects. Bennett working hard underneath. Bennett will get two more free throws. He is a workhorse underneath. And it'll go to the line for the fifth and sixth time tonight. FIU is just you're going to have to do something, especially in the halftime, and talk over this with Bennett. They're going to have to try to contain this situation immediately because if he gets get himself to the line, keep working himself in the paint that way, he's going to wear down the FIU defense. He's certainly trying to take advantage of the situation right now with Osaga sitting on the bench. Tallest player on the court for FIU, James Amatepe, 6'5". Him and Isaiah Banks. Andrew's listed at 6'6", I guess I should say. And he's not your typical four. Emma Tepe playing in that, that role, the four or five. Jojo Nunez, freshman from here in Miami, running the point. Panthers again, they're going deeper into their bench than they typically do. They carry a three-point lead into the under four timeout. Marshall and FIU and a fun one from the 305 tonight on Super Bowl week in Miami. Well, Marshall was controlling this game. They were up 21 to seven before the Panthers rattled off a 14 to two run to get themselves back in this game. FIU was actually lit by as many as seven. 
They got the transition game going. They started forcing turnovers on the herd and taking that to their advantage. Nine first half turnovers on Marshall. That's been to their detriment. Three point advantage for FIU. Andrews, a tough angle there. Nearly off the side of the backboard. And really for as well as FIU played for about that eight minute stretch, it's still just a one possession game. Both teams very much in it right now. And I think in the beginning, as fast as the start Marshall got off to, you saw that FIU had a little bit of, uh, of some turnovers, but they've kind of flipped the table and now kind of imposed that will onto Marshall and kind of forced them to make uh, possession issues. Marshall takes care of the basketball. They're getting decent looks in their half-court offense. Andy Taylor, a terrific floater right there. And over Osagai launching. No, he's three for five before that shot. Jeremy Ballard has no problems with him taking it. In the flow of the offense. Kinsey, who you see that explosion from the sophomore. And something to note, as you mentioned, FIU coming close. The shooting from outside it's kind of eased a little bit. Everything's been coming within the paint, as you see Kinsley coming in, and, and of course, the usage of Bennett. Marshall shooting 40% from the field. Kinsley, two for seven. Nunez trying to navigate his way to the buckets. Okay, a nice find. Love it. In and out. Missed a couple of those corner threes in the first half. Marshall back on top by a point. West. Too easy. Timeout, Jeremy Ballard. And the herd go back up by three. We'll take a quick break. Marshall responding. A counter punch. West to the bucket. Talked about the 14-2 run for FIU. Marshall with an 8-0 spurt themselves right now to put the herd back up by three. Approach the final minutes of the first half. And a foul whistled on Antonio Day. He's incredulous at the call. And that's the eighth team foul as well. Marshall was in the bonus. So both teams in the bonus right now. And the herd have committed 16 fouls. So one and one here for Andy Taylor. 58% free throw shooter. Connects on the first. Credit to the referees for just letting them play, not giving out a technical foul right away just for the jawing that Day Jr. was giving the referee. Both teams in the bonus. Marshall with a five-point lead. And two minutes left. Bit of a zone look here to switch things up on FIU. So they want him to try to shoot from the outside. Day goes up to Osaga. We'll get a pair of free throws. Goes down hard. Holding the side of his head. And as soon as he came down, the whiplash in the back of his head just slammed into the court. He had been rattled as anyone would be after going down like that. Let's take another look. Yeah, coming down hard. Just to be okay, we'll stay at the free throw line. Two free throws, and Conley knocks down the first. Osasu Osagai, the senior center, 13 points per game. 90 blocks this season, leads the country. Two seasons ago, he had 33 the whole year. Pretty sharp on those two free throws, back to a three-point game. 
Hey, I'll tell you what, partner, if you're Marshall, you've, you've got to feel great about where you're at right now. You're shooting 0 for 11 from beyond the arc. You give up a 14 to 2 run, and you're up by three on the road right now. You, you have to be feeling terrific, even as the three-point struggles continue. Of course, that, that's, that's definitely something that they have to feel good about. And I'm sure it's something they'll talk about in halftime, and they're going to want to adjust that. And for the FIU side of things, that's not good. You know, of course, going into halftime, once again, like I said, they're going to want to adjust and put a little bit more of their will well, into the game. Well, needs to take better care of the basketball. I FIU's agree doing with that. decent on the offensive boards as well. Jacob has one three and make it a pair of them. Trey John Jacob. Ties more. it back up at 38. We need a lot more of that as well. Panthers 5 for 17 from distance. This has been a fun first half. Kinsey launches. He will not end the drought from beyond the arc. Day on track meet to the under, other end of the courts, and he'll earn two free throws. Making a beeline to the bucket. And the crazy thing to know with the pace of this game, there hasn't been any fast break points by either of these teams. You know what, I think, I think that might be something the uh, official scores aren't entering into the, <laughs> into the, uh, the, the stat broadcast input because I tell, I, there has to be a fast point, fast break points tonight. How many transition points have we seen? Yeah. I was thinking to I, myself. I think that's one that just isn't being tallied because we're also seeing zero points in the paint uh, as well. Perhaps just uh, an error with the technology system that they're using this evening. Because there have certainly been points in the paint. There have certainly been uh, transition points. But that's just something we have to worry about <laughs> in terms of keeping track of. Yeah, because I was yeah. thinking to myself, with the pace that yeah. this game has been going, it seemed a little odd to me. Debatable uh, concept with our stat system here. All right, barely, barely any difference between the shot and game clock here. Let's see if Marshall will hold for the final attempt. Kinsey backing down for Fron. Oh, what a move. Oh, they wanted a goaltend. They might have had a good case. No whistle, five seconds to shoot. Marshall gets it back, two seconds. One on the clock, here's West, just off. And Marshall will have no three-pointers heading into the half and a one-point deficit on the road at FIU. I think Dan D'Antoni was seeking an explanation. Let's take another look. A beautiful move to get free of Furtron. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that ball is coming down. Had uh, some justice to their case, but uh, a 39-38 deficit after 20 minutes of play. Should have had a one-point lead. Panthers lead by a point. We'll take a break. You're watching Conference USA Basketball on ESPN Plus. Back after this.
welcome you back to the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. Halftime in Miami. 39-38 lead for the FIE Panthers at the half. A.J. Ricketts, Danny Torres. Let's take a look at the first 20 minutes for Marshall. Danny Ball Club jumped out to a 21-7 lead over FIU, then gave up a 14-2 run. Went on an 8-0 run themselves. But look, they're over 14 from beyond the arc. Tavion Kinsey only has six points, and they're only down by one. Some good, some good vibes if you're looking at the stat sheet for Marshall going into the second half. And Marshall has been up in this game as many as 14 on FIU, and you would figure, wow, that gives Marshall a good, you know, stretch there. But they've also had problems with turnovers. FIU has scored 14 points off of Marshall turnovers. So that's definitely, I think, Danny Tantoni is going to have to address that in the locker room for the second half to take better care of the basketball. Yeah, the great point. 14 points off those nine Marshall turnovers. Bennett leads the team in scoring. He has 11 in the first half. Three of four from the field, five of six from the free throw line. A combined 23 free throws between the two teams in the first half. Elsewhere for Marshall, we said Kinsey had six. Sharonich with six as well. And a couple players with four points in that first half. Andy Taylor had three steals, forced a couple FIU turnovers. But the Panthers lead by one of the half. We'll take a look at FIU's first 20 minutes. We'll return from the 305. Back at this. One point game at the half. FIU and Marshall 39-38 our score. The Herd looking for their third road win of the season. FIU looking to stay unbeaten at home since the 31st of last January. Thanks for joining us tonight on ESPN Plus. That's Danny Torres, I'm E.J. Ricketts. FIU plays well here. They did not get off to a good start tonight. They filled by 14, went on that 8-0 run. Trey John Jacobs been a big reason why they've been able to pull back in this game. Panthers five for 17 for three. Jacob has a couple of those. And their transition, forcing turnovers, help them get back in this one. For sure, and as you mentioned, the turnovers have uh, helped them get back into this game. They themselves also need to take better care of the basketball, and they need to contain Iron Bennett down low and not try to get into foul trouble into the second half.
trying to take care of that problem. And that's my main key and takeaway from the first half. Trey John Jacob, 15 points on six of eight shooting in the first half. Panthers getting on the offensive glass as well, seven offensive rebounds to give themselves some second opportunities. Osagai doing what he does defensively. He had three blocks in that first half. Seven points, seven rebounds, three blocks, not a bad first half stat line for the big man. But Jacob, the only FIU player in double figures in that first half. Decent crowd for the Panthers here in the lower bowl. Enjoying time festivities. This is the big game tonight. Got another one coming on Sunday. FIU and Marshall and an entertaining one this far in Miami. Point game at the half of the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. About three and a half minutes until we get things started. And half number two, FIU up 39-38 on Marshall. A pleasure to have you alongside us as always on ESPN Plus. I'm AJ Ricketts alongside Danny Torres, and as always, they pay me to say that. All right, you know, it's it's a very fun week here in the city of Miami. I know you've been going out to South Beach. Oh, like sure. we said, this is the appetizer. A lot of folks filing into town. Super Bowl on Sunday. I know. You took your talents to South Beach earlier this week. It was a fun vibe down there, I'm pretty sure. I definitely did. I went out to the set of first take yesterday, got to see uh, <laughs> a little bit of Stephen A. Smith yeah. and Max Kellerman. It was a great time, yeah. and there was a lot of people out there. All right, Chiefs, 49ers, who you got on Sunday? You know, my one, mind yeah. is telling me Chiefs, but my heart is telling me San Francisco 49ers. So I'm uh, I'm going to lean with San Francisco. Okay, you're probably wrong, so I'll take Kansas City. That <laughs> so I, I was sitting with Dan D'Antoni before the game. I said, all right, well, the Super Bowl's here in town, you know, for the, for the sake of it. You know, who do you have on Sunday? Are you invested at all? He said, I don't care who's, who's playing. I said, you're not a football guy? He said, I'm a Patriots fan, so I stopped caring once they lost. I said, Coach, you, you need to share the wealth a little bit for everybody. You've had you've had your Lombardi trophies. Let somebody else have a turn. Marshall left by you when we come back. A one-point lead for the Panthers. In Miami, 39-38. Back after this. Thank you for the Warriors for finding the Florida by the Panthers.
Time for second half action of the Ocean Bay Convocation Center, 39-38. Marshall, despite no 14 mark from beyond the arc, and nine first half turnovers. Only down a point on the road at FIU. By the way, our officials tonight, Lee Cassell, Antonio Petty, and Olandis Poole. AJ Ricketts alongside Danny Torres. And let's get the second half started from Miami. Panthers led by as many as seven. Marshall, as many as 14. They're going to write to Petty to start the, or Ben, I beg your pardon, to start the second half. Long guy in my head. 39 38. Bennett misfiring. And Antonio was talking about FIU's strategy and their defensive scheme. There's Banks rolling to the rim on the backdoor cut for an easy two. Marshall players were saying, or even saying, look, this is one of the first teams that truly is Osaga fouls Kinsey on the spin. One of the first teams that will switch one through five. And Antoni said, look, if they stay true, their point guard is going to be an iron. That's what I'm hoping. Noted they do a great job collapsing and knocking the ball loose. They want to get Bennett the basketball on these switches underneath. We haven't seen Day or one of FIU's point guards truly matched up in, in, in that disadvantageous situation yet. And they're certainly staying true to their switching action as Kinsey misses the first free throw. Fascinating chess match to take place over the final 19-23. Kinsey over two. Thanks, gets the board. You're right, we haven't. And I'm sure Coach Ballard for FIU is not going to want to have that situation come into play. No, I don't <laughs> think you want anyone other than Osaga trying to play in the post against Bennett unless, th unless they're fronting. Look, FIU guards will always, ha they have no problem fronting bigger players. Defense is ready to collapse. Nah, it's going to be a David and Goliath sort of situation. Supervisor be looped into the discussion here about something. So at Marshall, it, it should be 41 40. Kenzie turnaround at the end of uh, the half. No doubt should have counted. Kenzie having a back and forth with the FIU band for a moment there. 41 38. Just over 19 minutes to play. Really not sure what the delay is on here. Or if there's an error with the clock. Officials pointing at something on the baseline. I don't know. where the spinning wheel behind the FIU basket actually is placed. Perhaps that's something. There's a steal. Day. Oh, he missed it. Had an easy two points. Wasn't the easiest of layups, perhaps, to Taylor. Another floater over Osaga. He's had a pair of those today, avoiding the block. Andy Taylor, the Furman transfer. How about that pass? Andrews. Off the glass for two. Homley making his way to the paint. 43-40. It's like, it's like, it just amazes me. It's like Antonio Day Jr. can just see through people. Well, there's Bennett who got matched up with Andrews, knocked him to the ground. They got an easy two. Taking advantage of that switch. Yeah, now they're rolling the pinwheel off the court. Oh, this is quite funny to me. It's just, it'll be funny if D'Antoni just complains that, hey, I don't like that distraction for my players. Get it out of here. I would be interested in that discussion. Perhaps a uh, Marshall player sensitive to uh, you know, visually to things of that nature. Who knows? 43-42. Bennett wanted it more. Goodness, ripped it away from Osaga. Jogs his way back down the court. And now the clock, uh, there's no time on the clock. Oh, the clock on the other side it is working. 
one on the uh, the Marshall baskets. Just currently seeking some support. I guess FIU trying to take revenge for taking out our taking out the Panthers spinning board. Some uh, oper operational malfunctions here. 43-42. Panthers looking for win number 15 of the season. Coming off one of the most successful campaigns, of course, in program history last year, just the second postseason tournament last year, the first since their NCAA appearance in 1995. They appeared in the CollegeInsider.com tournament, defeated Texas State before bowing out to Green Bay. Who, of course, fell to Marshall in the championship. John Elmore, C.J. Burke's collegiate career. Ten seconds to shoot. West over day. Yes, sir. Jared West from the top of the key for the first triple for the Thundering Hurt tonight. Perhaps a sigh of relief from the entire Marshall bench in the city of Huntington as well. 45-43. Maybe that'll get the herd rolling. Banks follows it up to tie it. Marshall one for 15. Let's see if they can improve off of that. Now even despite that 6% clip from beyond the arc, they're shooting better as a team from the field than FIU. A 41% mark to 36 for the Panthers. Day diving for it, and he took it away from Bennett. Andrews. A little out of control, that's an offensive foul. Andy Taylor is giving Marshall solid minutes this season. Coming off a 15 point effort at Western Kentucky in which he had some big buckets throughout the course of the second half to keep Marshall in it. And he draws the charge on Andrews there. Second foul. On Devon Andrews. It's going to be interesting to see how Jeremy Ballard operates with his bench here in the second half. Sure, James Amatepe, Jojo Nunez, they got first half minutes, but do you keep going as to the well in the second half when each possession becomes more and more valuable? You put guys who aren't really known as scoring threats on the floor for as much time. I think you keep. I think you keep what's working right now. I think if Marshall starts to pull away a little bit, I think that's when you start to sort of try to change things up a bit. They're certainly on the court during that run. Day from the outside. That was not a facet of his game his freshman year. It undoubtedly is this season. He is a capable shooter from the outside. 35% entering this evening. Bennett. Yes, took on Osaga. Now, I'll pose this question to you, AJ. If Marshall ends up losing this game, it will be their third straight loss in a row. What will that mean to this Marshall team right now at this point of the season? I still think there's plenty of time to go. I'll answer you more in depth, Danny, after the under-16 time, 15.45 to play. Watching college basketball on ESPN+. Plus.
Well, it was a solid conclusion to the 2019 campaign for Marshall last season. The 2019 CIT champions ran away from Green Bay, had a terrific sellout capacity crowd at the Cam Henderson Center. John Elmore, CJ Burks, and company getting to go out on a high note in their final game. CIT champions, of course, coming off an NCAA tournament appearance the year prior. And they captured the attention of the, the entire country. For that win against Wichita State. Matchup against West Virginia. The following game. Marshall Aiden won all time against FIU. Last Panther win, the only FIU win in the series. You go back to January 2015. Picked up their first ever win in program history against Old Dominion last Thursday. Like to continue that trend of success against teams they don't usually see it against here tonight. In a place they play very well. As Bennett will head to the bench. Wouldn't imagine it be for long. And I think it's just athletics in general. AJ Marshall always gives FIU some sort of trouble <laughs> on the particularly on the gridiron the, the past two years, too. Exactly. Really tough losses to end the season for the Panthers. And, you know, two years ago, would have won the Panthers, the, uh, the CUSA East Division. Of course, this year, two played after FIU had beaten Miami, looking to keep up that momentum. Don Scott Davis rolling up in Huntington. There's another three from West. That's how it goes. You missed your first 15. Of course, the next two you take, you bury. Jared West providing the triple today. Lovett thought that was deflected off the hurt defender. It was not, so he let it go out of play. But I like that, AJ. I like that from Marshall. You know, they're struggling from, you know, beyond the arc, but they have trust in each other and confidence in each other just to keep shooting it from outside, and eventually, you know, it will go down. They just have that sort of confidence in each other. That's the last thing Dan D'Antoni wants is for anyone to hesitate based on his team's shooting numbers. Here's Amatepe out on West. He just buried the triple, looking for any sliver of space. He's open to the top of the key, but no need. Sharonitz driving to the buckets. Fifty-four fifty. Nice Ronich has a couple this evening. Jacob, that's a difficult layup. Here comes Andy Taylor. Kinsey. Off the left side of the rim is Jacob Skies High. Panthers look disjointed offensively. Corker in the fadeaway, missed everything. Saga and Andrews to check in the next dead ball. And another easy bunny for Marshall. Timeout at FIU. That's resemb resembling the early buckets they had, beating FIU defensively. Timeout, Jeremy Ballard, 56-50, our score.
D'Antoni told uh, Mark Martin up on the coaches show earlier this week, look, when we play our A game, I think we're capable of beating anybody. And I think that rings true, but on a night like tonight, I certainly wouldn't say Marshall's playing their A game. Maybe a B minus B game based on the turnovers, the three point shooting. They're still up six points right now. Kind of a theme we mentioned going into the half. And FIU has looked disjointed offensively. And look at where they're starting their offense here. Jared West pressuring well beyond the perimeter. That's not an easy shot. I think they'll live with that finish from Antonio Day. And that's just it. Both teams are not playing. <laughs> oh, Andy Taylor beating Devon Andrews at the line. Getting past his hip for two. Both of the, these teams are not playing their A game, but Marshall's just doing a little bit more just to get by. 58-50, Day, another floater. Osagai follows it up with a loud, emphatic finish. 58-54. West is starting to take over a little more in the offense, and that's a nice lot to Jansen Williams. Trying to reassert himself in the offense. And we talk about the next two opponents for FIU. They're currently playing each other, Western Kentucky and FAU, and the Owls currently lead 51-48. A lot of talents in South Florida this weekend from Conference USA play. Oh, <laughs> Andrews just flicked it up. Somehow found its way through the bucket. The last two baskets for FIU have not come easily. Defense starting to become very steady. West can't answer. Love it. Quick trigger. That's partially deflected. Kinsey got his hands into things. Here's Taylor. Yes, from Mayberry. 63 56. Oh, B. Heard go up by seven. I think the takes and the looks for FIU in this second half have been much more contested and more difficult for them compared to the first half. Timeout brings us to our under 12. Andy Taylor sending Marshall into the timeout, up seven. The transfer from Furman, a bucket from the outside. Here comes Marshall. I mentioned it earlier, Hassan Whiteside, he certainly made an impact in his one and only season in West Virginia. Doesn't even seem like it was 10 years ago. Of course, played right here in Miami with the Heat for a number of seasons. Now, making a cool $27 million per year with uh, Portland Trailblazers. What a one year he had, of course, at the Marshall career blocks record in that one season to uh, put, a, put in perspective his dominance at this level. 
Another good half court stand from Marshall looking to get out in transition. Taylor thought about it. Here it was to set up the offense. Up 712 to play. FIU unblemished at home. That streak is in jeopardy. West. Take out the Kinsey. Ten seconds to shoot. Andrews tried to get out of the passing lane. Kinsey goes up top. Oh, the dunk is no good. <laughs> Got a smile on his face. Put it quite simply. That was nearly a highlight reel. In the sequence. Jensen Williams will rather not talk about that moving forward. 63-56. Still time for FIU to work themselves. Plenty of time. I mean, they down by 14. We saw how quickly they erased that deficit. Osaga, a solid move underneath. Panthers got to get back here, though. Kinsey, looking for any space, nearly turned it over, left his feet. And Lovett had recovered at the time that happened. And FIU able to prevent uh, an easy two points. They've given up maybe about 10 points tonight on easy buckets on the break. Whether after a made bucket or free throw, don't force any missed shots. Inside, the rotation wasn't there, and the follow is. Yeah, Marshall just trying to catch FIU sleeping. Sharenitz is having great performance tonight as Andrews goes to the free throw line. 12 points, six of eight from the field. Bennett had 11 first half points. He has four here in the second, and it's getting set to sub back in. Devon Andrews is at the free throw line. Marshall fell 91-84 last Saturday, 64-60 the game prior against Western Kentucky. Andrews misses his first free throw. Trayshawn Jacobs. Jacob and Day re-enter. Here to Bennett in as well. Just keep an eye on Bennett this upcoming possession. See what set Marshall runs here in the half court as Andrews misses two costly free throws the way that the offense is struggling from the field. Nice screen, now rolling to the buckets. Gets underneath those Sagai. Three is off the mark on the quick shot. Vaughn Andrews, the senior, 10 points tonight. Four of 14, though, from the field. Hasn't been as efficient as he would prefer. Does have seven rebounds as well, so he is approaching a double-double. Marshall will take that field goal percentage now. 2-3 zone, driving into traffic. Back out today, doesn't want to pull up from that Vaughn. Yeah, West moving his feet and he forces the turnover. That is a sensational defensive possession for Marshall. And that's been a common refrain going through our minds here the last five or so minutes. They have taken it up another notch. And for all the struggles that youth has caused this season, Dan D'Antoni has noted he likes how his defense can execute. That was a great, great phenomenal stretch in defense there. And, and, and forcing the ball out to Day Jr., three-pointers are not his forte. And I'll tell you what, when they went 2-3 zone, there was nobody flashing in the high post for FIU. Three on one here, a must score. Jacob, foul. You don't want to give up that lob. Marshall, Marshall will take that result. Some important free throws coming up here for FIU at the line, just missed two. 10 for 16 at the strike today. Not a bad foul from Andy Taylor. Make them earn it at the line. Wasn't much there, to be honest, as well. He put a hand on it. I don't know how much he may have influenced that shot, regardless, to Jacob here. Now we're at the free throw line. You know what time it is, AJ. Kick and time. Your sneaker assessments. Yes, sir. Marshall's got all the same, same uh, shoes on, go by the team. Uh, 
I like Day Juniors and Osai guys. Oh no, Jared, Jared, oh yeah, no, I go, I'm going with Jared West. Got the slick South Beach kind of theme there. The neon green with the black. I'm a fan of that. Like his shoes, like his game. He has a pair of triples here in the second half. Been very active. Osagai, keeping that in play. West was open for a moment. Bennett goes cross court. Here's a three. Ah! Williams from the outside, 68-60. And ultimately, Osagai saving the ball from going out of bounds, costing FIU defensively in their rotation. Down by eight. Jacob looking to drive baseline. Bennett's there to help, and he smothered him out of bounds off of Jacob. Marshall with a little bit more energy here in the second half. And you're seeing that defensively. When you're driving to the basket and you got two immediately on you going up with you, it's going to be extremely difficult to get the ball in the basket. Kinsey to the bucket. It's a 10-point game. Marshall starting to get some distance. Panthers give up 73 points per game. Marshall's at 70 right now with eight minutes to play. Jacob, they needed that. Seventy-sixty-three. West lays it off in a hard foul committed by Jacob to prevent a wide open opportunity underneath. Dan D'Antoni said, look, we've been swimming upstream all year long, but at least we're still swimming. A seven point lead on the road as Jacob and the Panthers try to stay in it at home. Shooting 50% from the field. There's some white and green sparks throughout the crowd tonight. Enjoy where they're seeing. Team fighting on the road. Three and five in conference play. We know that a lot of those have been close games for Marshall. North Texas only lost by three. Charlotte, a two point defeat. Western, the first game around 64 60 in a game they led by 19. So often in the sports, the record perhaps not indicative of the talents. He's been it off at the line on his first free throw. AJ Ricketts, Danny Torres. A lot of fun here this evening. Antonio looking for a notable road win. This is certainly a year of transition in the Marshall program. They play tough with a lot of teams. Uh, look to be the class of the league this year as well. Iron Bennett now with 16 points in the game, leading his team in scoring. 11 in the first half, five here in the second. Eight point lead for Marshall, 7.39 to play. FIU has trailed by as many as 14. That was back in the first half. 
made up that deficit pretty quickly. Jacob, he's heating up. Back-to-back -back triples for Jacob, has to get back. Kinsey, a high flyer and an easy two. He beat him down the courts. Gets the two points. That's a huge bucket. Crazy Jacob, 25 points. Fix the net real quick. Jacob has humbled at Charlotte. Just two points on a poor shooting afternoon. So uncharacteristic for the senior that's been awfully steady for this program this season. Trying to get his team, the crown, back into it. It's just a seven, ten point game. Here's Lovitz. He misses. Look at Jacob crashing the boards. Oh, it took it taken away by Taylor. He's got four steals. Typically Jared West leading the team in that category, but Andy Taylor picking the pockets of FIU. And how unfortunate that is for Jacob. Kinsey, what a bucket. Oh, a floater in the lane. A little Mamba fadeaway. That is a high level offensive move. One of the best freshmen in Conference USA last season. Jacob has to watch out. Nearly turns it over, 10 seconds to shoot. FIU out of sorts offensively. Day. Eric Levitt all by himself. It has not been his day from the outside. Beck stepped on the sideline. 75-66. What a play from Tavion Kinsey. 12 points now on 5 of 13 shooting for Kinsey. Had a double-double Notre Dame earlier this season, 16 in his last game. And he had that career-high 14 assists against Howard. You know, also only had one turnover in that game. He's starting to grow up before Marshall stands on. 75-66. West thought about the three. Six seconds to shoot. Fade away with the hand in the face. And out of bounds. FIU basketball with 5.38 to play. If FIU wants to keep in the realm of this game, they're going to have to start getting, you know, shots in and start going offensively fast. Still 5.38 left, but they play up tempo. It's not as if, you know, they're a Virginia kind of offense. And they get a different style. This is out of character. Marshall shooting 69% from the field in the second half. Day lost his dribble. Saga lost it. That's blocked. Kinsey went up. Out of bounds to Marshall. FIU has been stifled in the second half. AJ, they're just not getting any good looks at all. I'd say about half of their... Ten field goals here in the second half have been contested. Close range shots. West, not better of it. And it rolling to the bucket. Still time to shoot here. 12 seconds on the shot clock. And we'll set a screen. Here comes Kinsey. Got another! Tavion Kinsey has taken over. 77-66. This young man is showing off right now. It's the Tavion Kinsey show right now. The sophomore from Columbus. And Banks just had it taken away from Bennett. Wasn't sure of what he wanted to do underneath the baskets. Things starting to turn, turn and change in a hurry for FIU. 9-0 at home this season. That streak is in serious jeopardy right now. Kinsey, wow, <laughs> off the glass. Tavion Kinsey, take over, young man. 79-66. What a sequence for the sophomore in Miami. With 4.05 left to play. Unguardable, unstoppable. Tavion Kinsey.
Miami is Tavion Kinsey's world right now. Turnaround jumpers, floaters in the lane, beating the defense down the court, taking some harm with some buckets off the glass. This young man is putting on a show in the 305 right now. How about the loss for words? This kid is taking over right now, and he is on fire. That's a lot of fun. Look, like we said, Dan, Dan Tony noted, he's got the wow factor. He can get up, put on a show at their uh, Midnight Madness events with his dunking ability. But for Marshall to take the next step, he's going to have to be more than a high flyer a great and a great dunker. Uh, I think he's blatantly showing that tonight right now. Andrews cannot respond. And Osagai trying to get a second opportunity. That's out of bounds off the FIU big man. They have held him in check in the second half. Osagai with 11 points and nine rebounds. Having all sorts of trouble underneath. And it's a 13 point game with 3.43 left to play, almost equaling the largest lead of the night for Marshall. Now again, you look at the scoring for the Herd this season, 74 points per game, they stand at 79. FIU only giving up 73 a game. I shouldn't say only, they have given up 73. They don't like it that high. It's a byproduct of their pace sometimes. It's 10th in the conference. Marshall's at 79 right now. Beats the press there. It was a much better shooting display in the second half by Marshall compared to the first. I mean, this is outrageous. Second half shooting, 18 for 25. They're at a 72% clip. Did it against Banks. It's going to be an open man with the double team. Got his own rebound and foul. That's just the fourth team foul in FIU, though. Look, AJ, I don't know what happened in that locker room at halftime. It's like D'Antoni called his brother and said, hey, can we get James Harden on the phone and give him a tip about all these shooting going on? I think he's still been finding who he is as a player. Certainly more of a scorer this season. Games like this will only contribute to him not being just a factor on this Marshall team, but really recognized throughout this conference. He's one of the better players in this league. Two more shots have come in here for the Herd. Five of the last six field goals for Marshall coming from Kenzie. Jared West is shooting two times. can see a bit of frustration starting to set in the face of Devon Andrews. His teammates pulled him aside just trying to get him relaxed and oh, calm. Yeah, I think, you know, this, this extra possession for Marshall a result of no box out on the perimeter. Certainly a byproduct. Now the team might be deflated after the run Marshall's going on right now. FIU has not made a field goal since 7.29 left to play. Trey John Jacob hit his second three in a row. Those are last points, and that'll end a drought. Nearly five minutes. Very inopportune time for that drought to come here. Jacob will commit the sixth team foul for FIU. Once the Panthers can mount a comeback, their uh, home win streak will come to a close. Currently at 364 days. Just lost to Southern Miss on January 31st of last season. That's the FIU president, Dr. Mark Rosenberg. He has to be happy with the progress of the program overall, but a disappointing night it would appear right now. 12 to shoot. You know what they say, AJ, all good things must come to an end. Well, it's, in reality, it's mid-season conference game. FIU in the thick of the hunt, trying to put themselves in the top five for pod play in a couple of weeks. Perhaps get themselves a bye to the conference tournament. Andrews, Andrews looking for a foul, went to the ground after that shot. Also missed by a mile. Marshall will take their time on this possession. Get it around 130. Take the majority of the shot clock here. 
the way they played in this second half. They deserve to slow things down a bit. Outscoring the Panthers 42-29. 66% from the field. West airballs this one. Shot, the shot clock reset. There's a jump ball. I don't think they hit the rim. Jeremy Ballard saying, why is that not a shot clock violation? Panthers have the arrow regardless. But I don't know why the shot clock reset. Maybe FIU basketball. Yeah, that ball did not hit the rim. Perhaps the official score thought that might have uh, grazed the front of the rim. It did not. So FIU, they're still going to go with the possession error on that. Day's own rebounds. It found. Nineteen left to play, down 12. Not a shooting foul, FIU will inbound. Both teams at six fouls now, so both FIU and Marshall in the bonus from here on out. Sagai, locate Jacob. Yeah, there's need to operate quickly here. Give another turnover away, a three on nothing. Bennett wants to go to the bucket, and why not? Bennett, have yourself a night. Williams ensuring no alley-oop on the other end. I run Bennett coast to coast for the flush with a minute left. I would not want to be in that man's way on a fast break, AJ. The whole bench exploding. After that play. <laughs> what a game for him tonight. His day connects on a triple. Bennett with 18, had 11 in the first half, and really set the tone for the physicality and the type of fight that Marshall wanted to bring this evening. And then Kinsey in the second half took over in the final 10 minutes. Five out of six buckets during that critical stretch where the herd pulled away. Kinsey with a mid-range jump. And final 10 minutes, the herd's just been lights off. Bennett and Kinsey will finish with eight seed apiece. They will take the final FIU shots. Maybe we get one more here. As time ticks down. Inconsequential land one for Devon Andrews with 4.7 left on the clock. Just kind of flipped that up there. Marshall, 84 points tonight. Most since their 89-69 victory against Rice on January 2nd. Bennett hope to do that on Saturday up at FAU in Boca. They get play like that from him. Who averages nine a game. He about doubles his average tonight. Marshall improves to 10 and 12 on the season. Four and five now in conference play. FIU loses at home for the first time this year. For the first time since Southern Miss last January 31st. Panthers dropped to five and four in conference play. Nine and one now at home this season. 84-74 final score, Parker. Uh, your final thoughts from here tonight, a, a very encouraging victory for the Herd as they try to get back to what their typical standard is in, in conference play. Listen, for FIU, they're going to want to take care of that basketball because if you don't take care of that basketball, you're not going to set yourself up in a position to win. And their shooting struggles uh, continue here tonight, and it's just something they're going to have to work on. You know, there's still time in this season, but every game, you know, down the stretch, it comes of importance, and especially in conference play. 74. Your final score. We'll be back in one moment to wrap things up here from the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. Marshall, a nice win on the road in Miami.
84-74, your final score from Miami tonight. The Panthers fall at home for the first time this season. Marshall, led by Bennett and Tavion Kinsey. Winners here on the road tonight. A.J. Ricketts, Danny Torres. And look, the sum things up one final time. Bennett, I think, set the tone in the first half. Had 11 first half points, a lot of physicality. Kinsey, oh boy, what a player taking over in the second half. Former All-Conference freshman had a performance to remember here in Miami. 18 points. I mean, that doesn't light up a stat sheet, but what did was his play down the stretch. It was a lot of fun to watch. Off the ball movement, and he just out-muscled. There's nothing more I can say. He just out-muscled the FIU in the paint, and that was proved to be the factor in tonight's game. Yeah, when you go over 14 from, the, from beyond the arc and a half, you're only down one point. It usually bodes well for the second half. It certainly did for Marshall tonight. Appreciate you joining us on ESPN Plus from my partner Danny Torres. I'm AJ Ricketts and our entire production staff led by Chris Santiago and KJ Kirkland. Your final score tonight's Marshall 84, FIU 74. The herd improved to 10 and 12. FIU drops to 14 and 8 from Miami. I'm AJ Ricketts. This has been a presentation of ESPN. To watch a replay of this game as well as many others, head to watchespn.com. From Miami, we bid you good night.